Hello everyone, it's Travis M here. Happy New Year to you all. We've got some very exciting news to announce to all those M10 mothers out there, the BMW M10 engine that is. Um, I've designed a bracket system uh, that holds a supercharger to supercharge the BMW M10 engine. Uh, and in collaboration with Hyde Motorworks, um, let's have a look at it. So about two years ago, I made contact with Hyde from Hyde Motorworks in Germany um, and we were talking about the need on the market for an M10 bracket system that holds superchargers. Um, I was interested in making one, Hyde was interested in uh, producing one and um, so we got together and um, I've designed this system and uh, this is the prototype of it right here. So let's look at the nuts and bolts of this build, this kit. Um, the kit will come with a new um, crank pulley. The crank pulley's got a uh, six rib belt um, provision at the front and at the rear it has a, um, a single uh, V belt pulley which is the original system there. Now looking at the pulley up close, um, you can see the six ribs out the front and the V pulley uh, uh, groove is at the back. Um, what we're going to put in here, this is just the first prototype. At the back here we'll put a little um, block facing where you can actually mount a uh, trigger wheel on there. Um, most people will want to run this system obviously with uh, a standalone ECU. So this particular build has got the M65 uh, Eaton supercharger, um, which is very closely based on the M40 M45 version of the Eaton supercharger. Uh, it's got slightly different uh, rear housings. This one is off a, a um, um, Sadie's C200, the compressor versions. Um, the minis, the Mini Coopers have mainly the M45s. So designing this build I wanted to keep the symmetry as close as possible um, to the natural um, 30 degree slant of the, the way that the BMW M10 engine sits. Um, so the supercharger also sits at 30 degrees but in the opposite direction. And you can see the existing uh, E30 style plenum and I think the late E21 style plenum um, sits neatly above where the supercharger sits. Um, the intake and um, the original um, bypass valve port here will be blanked off. Um, in the green tape around there, that's the intake port of the supercharger. And where the black flange is there, that's the, um, the outlet of the supercharger there. So coming in from the front here, you'll see the outlet of the supercharger. Um, for those that want to not use a, um, an intercooler, you can just route the, the pipe work straight from there, the outlet, to directly underneath the plenum where that's where we'll be mounting the uh, throttle bodies and for those that do want to uh, install an intercooler as well with this build um, there's ample space in here there's about 250 mils in here where two pipes can come through one from the outlet of the supercharger of course which can probably come through this area and then to the side of the radio out the front and returning probably from a very similar spot um, beside the radiator perhaps on top of the outlet pipe of the um, uh, that goes towards the intercooler returning from the intercooler and that can probably sit just around this top part here just underneath that bar heading straight towards the intake plenum flange on there and you'll notice as well, uh, it's not the original M10 uh, alternator. This one is from an E46. Um, so the whole build was built 
um, pretty much around the, um, the low level of placement of this E46 alternator. And if you take a look, um, this crank fully here obviously is one of the prototype ones. Um, as I said early in the video, there'll be provision um, just behind where the, um, the notch of the uh, smaller V-belt is. Um, that's where you can mount a crank trigger uh, wheel at your own leisure. And the clearance in there will be um, just behind the water pump pulley and in front of the timing mark indicator here. So there's plenty of space back here to put one um, that can be perhaps 20 mils greater in diameter than the outside of this rear individual small V pulley, V belt, sorry. So the kit's comprised pretty much of um, uh, about four or five different parts. We've got the front um, alternator mounting bracket here, which everything's mounted to. Um, if we take a peek on the inside here, we've got this um, bracket here, which is bracket one, which bolts to via, whoop, via that bolt there and the other one just inside there um, to the side of the engine block. And then looking down the side, um, there are several brackets, several brackets that crisscross each other that provide support. And at the top here, you'll see there's um, uh, that, that bracket there um, that supports the supercharger. Um, Good idea that that's put there just for extra support there's a lot of torque that will be going through this thing so coming around to the rear of the unit now um, another major component here is the rear brace um, which it is um, joined on to the the point where the um, the original plenum stand comes off the side of the engine block there um, and then that goes down to uh, the engine mount points and the rubbers there um, yeah so this stand comes up and that bolt right in the middle of the frame there that is the adjustment point and the mount point for the rear mount point of the m65 eaton um, up the top here you'll see there's a little a little bracket here right there. and that um, that helps that takes the place to support the intake plenum where the original spot was um, on this opposite side and then meeting up with that hole right there so that's been removed and this has been replaced with the new um, rear mount so coming around to the front here, uh, the, um, the tensioning assembly here for the, the supercharger itself, um, designed off a, a Nissan in itself, and um, that is mounted to uh, these brackets here. There's one there, which is a larger one, and a smaller one on this side. Um, superchargers obviously have lots of different mount points, um, the plan is to, um, or the next next plan is to actually um, design a system that can mount onto this base plate system here that can um, take the SC14 supercharger, uh, the Toyota one, uh, and then after that we'll be looking at mounting Rotrex um, centrifugal su superchargers to this system as well. Um, with only a few changes of making um, just some additions or removals of these, these front two little brackets here. Um, and the base plate system should be able to house relatively easily um, different styles of superchargers. But that's all coming up. 
So there it is, essentially we've got um, a bracket system that will hopefully hold and, um, and be able to run uh, several different types of superchargers. At this stage we're running with the Eaton M65, a very reliable supercharger, um, sitting on a very reliable, robust, almost bomb proof M10 engine. So uh, stay tuned and we'll have a look at some more superchargers within the next 6 to 12 months that can sit on this system. Um, talk to Hyde, talk to myself, email, um, whatever you need to do, um, we can answer questions, talk you through uh, potential builds um, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. All the best.